Welcome to the Mayor Show. As we continue to go through this COVID-19, uh, we want everybody to stay safe, follow many of the rules, all of the rules that you hear about. Try to keep away from people as much as you can and, and the shaking hands, they tell you, wash your hands, all of the things they tell you, your masks and everything. And uh, that'll lead us into our program today. It's all about our Ben Salem Rescue Squad here in Ben Salem. Uh, they do an incredible job here in Ben Salem for years now, and I have with me today the Executive Director, Tom Topley. Tom, good to be with you. And, Thanks for uh, having me, Mayor. And to have you here today, we're going to talk about a very important thing coming up in the elections. No, it's not about the candidates or anything like that. It's about our Bucks, our, I almost said Bucks guy, but our Ben Salem Rescue Squad is ha on a resolution to raise tax uh, for that, just for the rescue squad. It's a question on the ballot. And we support that very much here in Ben Salem. We know all of the problems that they've been going through, uh, the money end of their problems. Uh, and they've done an incredible job through, through this COVID, as they always do. But especially this year has been a very, very tough year. So I'm gonna have Tom Topley, the executive director, talk about uh, the Ben Salem Rescue Squad's resolution to raise taxes uh, on the, uh, it's gonna be on your ballot. So when you go in to, to vote, it'll be a yes or no. So, uh, and as I say, I'm supporting it very, very much. Uh, they really need this. Uh, it's not something for the township. This is just Ben Salem Rescue Squad. And having said that, Tom, uh, welcome again. And uh, why don't you tell us a little bit about how important this is to our rescue squad? Well, like you said, sir, we, we have a uh, referendum on the ballot this year f to increase funding to the rescue squad. We, we haven't had a funding increase since 2010. And uh, we've done everything we can to, to save money and, and provide the best service we can to the township for the last 10 years. And uh, some of the things we've been doing to save money are, are at the end of their life. And we need to purchase some new equipment that's very expensive. COVID has caused us to uh, re-look at some of our equipment that we have to replace. And uh, our biggest problem right now is there's a national crisis of paramedics and EMTs. Uh, Pennsylvania, before COVID hit, made uh, the crisis in EMS the number two priority for the state this year. That was before COVID. That was before COVID. COVID, right. of course, took, took the front, front page on that one, and we're, we're still battling that. So... Uh Tom, I think I, I talk to you quite a bit you know, all the time. We're not just talking about this uh, right today that we need these fundings. We talk about it throughout the year and obviously throughout the years we've been talking about it. But uh, I know that even the great job of all of our doctors, nurses, EMS police who have been through all of this uh, with the COVID, uh, it's hard to get EMS people, paramedics, am I right? It, it, isn't that something, kind of a shortage in the pay scale and everything? It, it, it's very, very hard to get paramedics especially, and, and they're our highest trained uh, members. Uh, EMTs are starting to get hard to get, uh, which, which is very, uh, very concerning, but uh, there's a national crisis. It, it's been on for a few years and it's starting to hit the Northeast United States. And uh, for example, I just put a Facebook uh, post up that uh, we need to hire two full-time paramedics. I, 16,000, 13,000 people saw the post. We had one application for a full-time position and we called the gentleman and asked him to come in for an interview and he never showed up. So we, we literally, 13,000 people saw the uh, ad and got no, no applicants. Wow, that's, that's incredible. So uh, imagine that. Now, we need paramedics and EMS people that are on there all the time. So it's really, really getting tough. Uh, hopefully, uh, I, I'm not so sure how we can uh, make this happen. Is it, is it a pay scale, do you think? Or? Well, one of the problems that, that we have at Ben Salm is uh, our, our pay scale has not increased since 2010. Um, our paramedics have gotten some cost of living raises over the last 10 years, but we have not increased our base pay. And uh, one of the local ambulances in the central part of uh, Bucks County pays about $10,000 a year more for a paramedic than we do. And the city of Philadelphia pays about $20,000 a year more. And uh, for the first time in as long as I can remember, we've lost two paramedics in the last 18 months to, 
to other local rescue squads, which, which really doesn't happen. People usually come to our place, at, you know, fair pay, fair benefits, but they, they like all the programs we do, like the stroke truck and, and some other things. So they kind of stay. They, they rarely go other places. So that, that was alarming to me that we're, we're seriously underpaying our staff. Is that something you'll have to look at in the future as far as pay scale goes? Yeah, pay scale is going to be a, a big thing we need to look at okay. in the next couple of years. And obviously that's an increase in, uh, in, in, in what you have to do to run your res rescue. So, uh, again, that's what we're talking about here today at this upcoming referendum. Uh, you know, I going for a mill, one mill, uh, which is equivalent to about $21 to the household, the average household. Uh, I, I, it's not a million. I want to clarify that because I think some people think you're getting a million dollars. It's not that. It's a one mil increase that, a, if, that equivalent to about $21. I believe that's what we, we have here out of our finance office. So it's about $21 more a year, uh, which I know one penny more in any kind of tax is a lot. But for this, what we do here in Ben Salem, and we have the best rescue squad. I mean, you, uh, there's none can compete with us. There has been rescue squads that went out of business, and uh, and we just flourish here because of uh, certainly Tom's leadership and uh, great men and women you have working there. So it's something that we want to uh, uh, hope that you'll go in there and vote yes on this. It's very important. And Tom, uh, tell us, you know, just tell us passionately how important is this I know you wouldn't come asking for this in 10 years but it, you have to have it no I, th this is very important we're uh, we're at a point where uh, staffing is an issue that that's our biggest thing we're trying to address tell them how much an ambulance costs but uh, one of one of the other things a new ambulance in 2020 is uh, between 230 and 270 thousand dollars for a new ambulance the last time we bought a new ambulance was 2012 it was 175000 which I thought was a lot of money back then. It's almost doubled. But uh, the government came out with some new safety standards for, for how the, the stretcher in the back of the ambulance is mounted, for seat belts. Uh, they, they need six-point restraints like race car drivers in the back of uh, the ambulance for new ambulances now. And uh, it added a lot of cost to the structural. You know, they had to redesign the structure of the ambulance and things like that. Um, and a lot of things we, we had to replace in 2010 because we were in desperate, desperate need of money and let things go for many years are coming up to the end of their useful life. Um, our heart monitors are, um, are 15 years old now. They're at the end of their useful life. And a new heart monitor is $40,000. Wow. What were they in the beginning? Way back when they were. They were about uh, a little 15? under $25,000. Oh, they're 25 and they're 40 now? They're 40. But uh, one of the... the the great things about these new monitors we're looking at is uh, when we put somebody on a ventilator, it's called intubation, and we have to get our face real close to the patients. And since COVID, we kind of stopped doing that, and we're using different ways to do airways. Well, to get back to that standard now, these new heart monitors have a video uh, laryngoscope, basically. We can, put, we can put the device in to look for the patient's lungs to put a tube in to breathe for them, but keep our face away from them and look at a video screen. So, oh, wow. you know, the technology is wonderful, but it comes at a cost. Yeah, yeah. Well, uh, you know, I, while we're on that subject of ambulances, and certainly uh, with your leadership and all of us participating with Jeff Hospital, we have that stroke ambulance. That stroke ambulance, I believe, was donated by Jeff. Am I correct? Uh, yeah, so the this, this stroke ambulance is actually owned by Jefferson. And they let us, they, they're allowing us to use it, but they, they also donate all the money for all the crews and the staffing. So um, tell them how much that ambulance costs. The, the, the stroke ambulance was uh, $1.2 million. $1.2 million for an, that stroke ambulance. And it, it is incredible. I mean, what it, what it does in here, it monitors you. You go right to the doctor. Am I correct? Uh, I don't want to say anything out of line, but yeah. I've been inside of there, and you got uh, CAT scan and everything is in, in there and all? Yeah, the, the stroke truck's uh, you know, a, a great piece of equipment. It's a great tool. It's a great program that we're sharing with Jefferson. But uh, if, um, 
if you have a if you, if you unfortunately are having a stroke uh, within minutes after we get to your house you're registered at the hospital you have a cat scan and you're uh, talking directly over a tv with a doctor with a doctor and um, it's it's saving so much time and uh, we know we know for every minute you're having a stroke you lose brain cells so every minute really counts kind of like having a heart attack yeah. uh, well, we sent everybody that magnet on there to look, mm-hmm. how to look out. Every household should have got it. If you didn't get one, please uh, let us know. We'll make sure you get it. You put it on your fridge, and uh, it tells you all the things to look for. And uh, if you're having a stroke, and uh, like like Tom said, every second counts. And that uh, you saved several people already. Am I right? Yeah, it's it's done wonderful work. It really has. So, so when you hear those kind of amounts of money for her, and we were lucky with Jefferson uh, uh, supplying that ambulance here to Ben Salem. Uh, so, uh, and just the day-to-day equipment, what they need, and the technology has changed. Uh, they're not asking for a lot here, ladies and gentlemen. It's very important to us for the safety of our community. And you know, I always say the things that we're sworn to, the safety and welfare of our community. And I'll say that for our police too we support them a thousand percent our police department here there'll be no defunding in Ben Salem I can assure you that so uh, but just quickly to get back Tom the last word anything you want to add how we how passionate we have to get these people who are out there to vote there's a lot of people going to be voting yes we get them to say yes uh, well I think the strong the strongest thing for our organization all the emergency services in Ben Salem is the support we've gotten from the mayor, council, the community over the years. Um, the council is 100% behind this. The mayor has always been a great supporter of us, and uh, our community has never let us down. So I think they're going to vote yes for this yeah. and, and set us up for the next 10, 15 years. It's important, ladies and gentlemen, that we do this. Uh, go out and vote. Don't forget to get out to vote. And when you do, remember the referendum on there. Vote yes for the uh, rescue squad here in Ben Salem. On the referendum, look for the res- referendum. It'll say yes or no. Okay, everybody, until next time, God bless.